The last time World War II era German panzer tanks saw action was during the Six Day War between Syria and Israel in 1967, during heavy combat along the infamous Golan Heights. The Syrians had managed to collect together an interesting group of German vehicles before the Six Day War in 1967. Their main battle tank was the Panzer IV, of the late war versions with the long barrel KWK 40 75mm gun. This could penetrate the M4 Sherman's armour at ranges of up to a thousand yards. So where had Syria obtained Panzer IVs from, considering that the war had ended 22 years earlier? It is believed that the former colonial power France supplied Syria with around 40 Panzer IVs in the 1950s. Some had previously been used briefly by the French army. All of the French Panzer IVs were either captured or battlefield recoveries, and some were cobbled together from different types of Panzer IVs, creating Frankenstein tanks. The French had warehoused the Panzer IVs between 1945 and the early 50s. After Israel became independent in 1948, France had attempted to remain on good terms with both Israel and Syria, and they supplied arms to both. The Panzer IV transfers were to curry diplomatic favour with Syria. Syria also obtained some Panzer IVs from communist Czechoslovakia. The Soviet Red Army had captured huge numbers of the type at the end of the war and had established a collection point at the former German barracks at Milovice near Prague. By January 1946, there were 146 Panzer IVs in storage. Then, Czechoslovak clean-up efforts across the battlefields added another 102 Panzer IV wrecks, and from these, 80 operational tanks were rebuilt. By January 1947, the Czechoslovak army had 245 operational Panzer IVs, the different versions all mixed up, like in France. These tanks were used by the Czechoslovaks until 1948, when large numbers of Soviet T-34s replaced them. The Syrian military was sniffing around Europe for Panzer IVs, and in 1955 a delegation came to Czechoslovakia, purchasing 45 tanks, paying cash in British pounds. The price was £5,400 sterling per tank. That's the equivalent of about £110,000 or US dollars today. Each tank came with spares and full ammunition supply and were delivered by November 1955. In 1957, Syria bought a further 15 Panzer IVs from Czechoslovakia. A further 17 Panzer IVs came from Spain, all of the Alfs H version. They had originally been bought by General Franco from Germany in 1943 and were in as new condition. They arrived in Syria in December 1965. Syria would also deploy the Sturmgeschütz 3 assault gun, or Stug 3, armed with a 75mm Stug 40 gun. Syria had 28, but never all at once. Nine were purchased from France in 1950. They were Wehrmacht combat captures. Czechoslovakia had in its possession by 1953 126 Stug 3s, when it retired the type and placed them into storage. Twelve were sold to Syria in November 1955, all of the Alfs G version, at £3,250 each. Ten non-operational Stug 3s were also sold for spare parts. Romania sold Syria one Stug 3. It had been sent to Czechoslovakia for possible upgrade and was included in the Czechoslovak sale. Lastly, Spain sold Syria 10 mint condition Stug 3s in December 1965. Syria also deployed six rare Jagdpanzer IVs. These were tank destroyers armed with the Pac 39 L48 75mm gun. They came from France in 1950, more battlefield relics from World War II. So how did the last World War II panzers fare in combat against the Israelis? The first shooting had begun in 1964, when Syrian panzers were emplaced on the western slope of the Golan Heights, firing at farmers in the Galilee region. In 1965, Israeli Shermans exchanged fire with Syrian panzer IVs. UN peacekeeping missions kept them apart later on. 
But when Syrian Panzer IVs moved back into position, they faced Israeli Centurions, the heavily armoured British tanks armed with 105mm guns. Two Panzer IVs were rapidly destroyed. In 1967, Israel attempted to make a preemptive strike against Egypt. The war began on the 5th of June. The Syrian army joined in on Egypt's side. Syria tried to invade Israel from the north, but was not equal to the task. After 24 hours, Syria had only managed to advance two miles. The next day, Israeli Defense Force units pushed the Syrians back to the border and also completed the conquest of Sinai in Egypt. On the 9th of June 1967, the Israeli Defense Force assaulted the Syrian-held Golan Heights, encountering Syrian panzers, which had been held in reserve. On the 10th of June, the IDF routed them. In 15 hours, the Israelis knocked out about 25% of Syria's military vehicles, including many World War II German vehicles. About two dozen Syrian Stug 3s had been half-buried into defilade positions as makeshift pillboxes. At least three were confirmed as knocked out, and one was captured, operational, and taken as a trophy by the Israelis. The remainder were abandoned on the heights. Of the six Yagpanzer IVs, one was knocked out. The remaining five retired to Syria. They were last heard of in 1991, when they were listed as being in long-term warehouse storage north of Damascus, but have probably been subsequently scrapped. On the 6th of June 1967, it has been established that 25 Syrian Panzer IVs were operational, with another 10 partially operational. Of these, at least 10 were knocked out by Israeli tanks during the Six-Day War. The final kill was on the 10th of June 1967, when one was knocked out by an M50 Super Sherman, firing a high-velocity French 75mm heat round. Four Panzer IVs were captured and taken to Israel as trophies. A further two were captured by the Israelis and taken for evaluation. Not one Israeli tank was knocked out by a German panzer. All but one example of the Panzer IV in Syrian service was scrapped in the early 1970s. A few shot-up hulks remain on the Golan Heights, along with a few Stug threes. So ended the last battle for Nazi Germany's famous panzers. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.